Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to be installing Apache Cassandra in Windows. Now this is going to require probably some technical sophistication on your part. You're going to need to be able to read an error message and identify what's wrong or at least be able to Google it and find results that are useful for you. Uh, I'm going to show you the problems I've run into and the solutions and it will look pretty easy but I imagine you'll run into one or two things that I didn't run into. Just guessing. So um, be prepared for that. Note that I've got just a vanilla Windows 10 install. Nothing is set up yet. The only thing I've done here is download some files uh, so you don't have to watch the video waiting for me to download them. But I'll still uh, direct you to where you need to go to download the files that we're going to be using. Um, if you go to the start menu um, and settings, you can find out what version of Windows you're using. So I'm going to click on system and um, go down to about. And um, you can see I'm using 64-bit operating system. Uh, you'll want to know that if it's 64-bit or 32-bit for the types of files you're downloading. Okay, so I'm going to open up Edge because that's all I have. And uh, I'm going to go to the uh, Apache Cassandra website, cassandra.apache.org. We're going to download this, but first of all, we're going to look at the documentation. So I'm going to go to Getting Started and uh, prerequisites for the install. You can see we need Java 8. So it's important that we get the eighth version of Java, not the latest version, and also Python 2.7. I know that 2.7 is uh, no longer supported and version 3 has been around for quite a while. And you can actually run Apache Cassandra with version 3, but you can't use this uh, CQLSH. This is the Cassandra query language shell. You can't use that with the newer version of Apache. So right now we're stuck with version 2.7. Um, but you can check this in case it's updated uh, in the future if you're uh, downloading something that maybe uh, it has support in the future. We can leverage that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to these websites in a new tab. Here's the Java link. And so we're going to want, again, not version 13 or whatever's listed. You want to scroll down to um, the version 8. So here's Java SE 8, uh, the current revision. You might have a higher version. And we want to download the Java Development Kit, the JDK. Um, you can get away with running with just the Java Runtime Environment, the JRE. Um, however, the JDK, the Development Kit, will allow you to uh, develop in Java. And we are going to be writing some Java applications later. So this will help us with just one download. Now here, I'm going to accept the license agreement, and then I'm going to um, download the x64 because I have a 64-bit machine. If you have 32-bit, you'll want the um, x86 version. And uh, if you click this link here, it actually makes you have require an Oracle account. So you need to create one if you don't have one or sign in. Once you sign in, the download just pops right up. So that's a little annoying. Uh, it's a free account. Um, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I already have that download, so I'm not gonna do that part. Now for Python, um, we're going to go to Downloads. We're not going to go with the latest 3. Point whatever. Um, so I'm going to click on Windows here, and I'm going to go to latest Python 2.7 and uh, scroll down. And again, there's an x86-64, so that's for 64-bit machines. Or if you have 32-bit, go with the 32-bit version. Uh, click that. Okay, we'll also need Apache Cassandra. Um, so I can go to the download page here, and um, we're actually not going to use uh, the 3.11.5 version. There's actually open bug for Windows with that. It's a uh, listed issue. Here we go. So um, note it says uh, Cassandra 3.11.5 fails to start on Windows, so <laughs> that's an open issue. Cassandra... 3.11.5 fails to start, but 3.11.4 doesn't fail to start. So we're going to go with uh, this slightly previous version because this issue is currently unresolved. You can check to see uh, if there's a new version uh, that maybe fixes this when you try to install it. Okay, so to get the older version, we're going to go to the unsupported archive. So click on archive here, and we'll scroll down to 3.11.4. And download this tar gun zip. So after that's downloaded, we're going to need something that can extract this. Um, so I recommend 7-Zip. You might have a different um, zip tool. Click on, again, if you have the 64-bit version of Windows, then you can download here. Otherwise, the 32-bit version. Or if you have it already set up or something else, you can use that. The default Windows extractor does not work with these more common Linux 
archive versions. Okay, so that should be it for downloads. If I open up my downloads folder, downloads, you can see I've got those four things that we've talked about. Go ahead and run the installer for the Java development kit. And we can really just click next. This is fine. Okay, so I'll hit close. Now if I go to a command prompt, so here I'll just in the search type CMD, open up a command prompt. I should be able to type Java dash version and see that it is 1.8 point something. So that seems to be working just fine. Now we can go ahead and install Python. Now I'm gonna install this for all users. You could install it just for you. Um, we can click next here. Uh, now one thing we want to do that's not in the default is add Python to the path. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select this. We can do this later, but it's easier to just let the installer do it. I'll show you how to do it later as well. Okay, so since we now have it installed and added it to the path, I can open up the command prompt again. You'll need to open up a new command prompt after doing the install. And I can type Python dash dash version and you should see Python 2.7. Um, and if you don't see anything listed here, um, that's not added to your path. So if you wanna add it to your path after installing it, maybe you already have installed before this video, um, you can open up the environment variables. So I'm just gonna type environment, edit the system environment variables. It's a quick way to get to it. Click on environment variables down here at the bottom. And then under um, system variables, there's a path here. If I click edit, you can see I've got the two locations here, one to where Python was installed and the, the scripts folder within it. Um, so you can check to see that that is in fact where Python uh, lives and add it accordingly uh, to your environment variables. After you make those changes if needed, you can just hit OK and OK and OK again, and then reopen a command prompt to check to see if it's working. Okay, so now we've got uh, two of those things set up that we need. The next thing that we need is uh, Cassandra. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the downloads. We're gonna extract Cassandra here. And so in order to do that, we need the 7-zip, which I downloaded, or another archive tool. It's pretty fast. All right, so now I can right-click on Cassandra and go to 7-zip, and I'm just gonna extract it here and this will extract the tar, and then we can extract the tar. So I'm gonna do it again uh, to get the actual files extract here. This will take just a bit longer, and uh, if you're prompted to overwrite files, then just hit yes to all. That seems to happen. So here's an example, I'm just gonna hit yes to all. And then here's the file. Now I like to put this file in the root of the C drive. Um, so I'm gonna cut and paste it into the root of the C drive. Um, you could put it into program files. If you put it into program files, you'll have to run your command line uh, using an admin command line. So that is just one extra step that I don't want to have to worry about. Now, what we can do is open a command prompt. Navigate to this. So I'm going to navigate to Apache Cassandra slash bin. We should be able to test it out to see if it works. Now, you might run into some problems, but let's just test it out. So I'm going to type in Cassandra. The, the more important area here is saying Java home environment variable not set. So we need to set this Java home environment variable. So go back to the environment variables and we can just do a, a user variable here if we'd like. I'm going to make a Java underscore home and I'm going to browse to where Java was installed. By default, which is what I just clicked through, it's installed in program files. So C program files Java, and then we're gonna go with the Java runtime environment and not the bin, just, just the Java runtime environment here. So I'm gonna click OK, click OK, and that variable has now been set. So I need to restart the command line. CMD, navigate to Apache Cassandra, slash bin, try again. you'll see some warnings, you'll see a bunch of output, 
and uh, whenever it stops, okay, it's working. So if, if it didn't come back to the command prompt, um, if it's still running, that means it is actually working. Uh, now you may have um, a situation where you run into a problem with it saying not enough heap space or something. I've had that problem where on systems with more memory allocated, and so I'll just show you uh, how I would fix that. This is what I had to do um, on a previous install. I went to the Cassandra folder, um, and then inside of conf, there's a JVM options. So I'm just gonna open that. Let's see, notepad will be fine for now. And I'm gonna scroll down. You could probably use a search, um, but near the bottom somewhere, there's some information about the heap. Here it is. So heap settings. Um, and here's the formula. So it actually uh, will use at most half of your RAM and at least a quarter of your RAM. So if you have a lot of RAM, this is my theory, um, then it gets too big. If it's about two gigabytes um, or more, then um, the Java runtime environment uh, doesn't allocate enough space uh, for the heap to be that big. And so I would change the, and comment these settings. So note that I, um, I removed the pound signs here. So that way these two settings are are uncommented. I'm just changing them to one gigabyte. So one G here. Uh, so this is the maximum size. I'm just setting that to one gigabyte and the minimum size. Um, I'm setting that to one gigabyte as well. That way um, it's just going to be one gigabyte. You can also use M at the end for uh, megabytes. So if you wanted to, you could have 512 M for example, depending on how much memory you have to work with. Um, I'm not sure if it makes um, too much of a difference. But I'm just going to go with one gigabyte here uh, is my my recommendation to try first if you run into that heap allocation issue. Um, I don't have that, so I'm not gonna not gonna bother saving it um, just now. Okay, another thing that we saw before, if I scroll all the way up to the top here, is there's this um, please use this PowerShell command to get rid of the restrictions so we can take advantage of the full features. Might as well do that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a PowerShell, so I'm gonna just search for PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell, Windows PowerShell. Ooh, I actually need to run it as administrator. So uh, here's a shortcut. So if you right click on the start, you can go to PowerShell admin and start that up here. Um, and then we can actually just run this command that's listed here, set execution policy unrestricted. Uh, now, also what we can do is see our current execution policy. So this is just, just a little bonus information. So uh, we can do get execution policy and do the list. And you can see uh, currently I don't have any um, policies defined. What I'm going to do is define one uh, by setting the execution policy uh, to be unrestricted for the local machine. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to hit Y for yes. And then we're done. If I want to go up and list it again, you can see that uh, now we have local machine unrestricted. Um, so that'll get rid of this warning message here. Um, I'm gonna exit out of this uh, running instance. I'm gonna hit Control C uh, to cancel the Cassandra thread and just, yeah, we'll stop the batch process. We can run it one more time. And um, you'll see now it says detected PowerShell execution permissions. Um, let me just scroll up so we can see that part again. So um, it's uh, running with enhanced startup, you can see right there. So we've got that going on. There's a couple more warnings here that um, we're just gonna not worry about. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any insights into those, but I don't think they're, they're gonna be a major issue. So it seems to be running just fine. Good deal. So now what we can do is we can open up another command prompt and test out if we're actually able to type in some queries, if we can open up the query shell, the Cassandra query language shell. So we can navigate back to Apache Cassandra slash bin, and uh, we'll write type CQLSH, that's the Cassandra query language shell, and open that up. And you should see um, a prompt like this where you're able to type in queries. So that means it's working. Um, I'm also seeing this warning here, which means uh, we're missing a dependency. So let's go ahead and install that. So I'm gonna exit out here of the shell and uh, we need an admin command line. So I'm just gonna type CMD, right click on it here, run as administrator. Yes. And I'm gonna do an install of this package. So it says um, we need to install a high read line I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna do pip install. Pip is the Python installer for packages, and then pi readline. 
we know that Python's depreciated, but that's what we have to use. Uh, we could also run this if we wanted to um, upgrade pip as well, not required for this video, but might as well. And uh, now we should be able to run CQLSH and not get that warning. So you can see now with this line, the warning's gone and we should be able to type in queries there just fine. Okay, one last thing I'd like to be able to do is uh, not have to navigate to this directory to run Cassandra. So we'll add one more thing to our path. We'll go ahead and add Cassandra to our path. Um, so here, here's uh, Cassandra is located in the C drive on my folder. So I'm going to open up the environment variables one more time. And again, edit the path. You can edit this path um, or this path. This path is for all the users. This path is just for me. So I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to add something new to it. Um, and I guess I can browse to it. C drive, Apache Cassandra, bin. I'm going to hit OK. OK. So now, um, let me just go ahead and exit out of all this stuff. We can, you know, restart our computer, exit out of everything, um, do whatever we want. But whenever we want to go back and run Apache Cassandra, we can just open up a command prompt and type in from anywhere Cassandra. And uh, when that finishes, we'll be able to open up another command prompt. Yeah, I'll just open up another one. And from anywhere, type the Cassandra query language shell and connect to it and type in our commands there if we want to. Um, obviously, we're going to create an application uh, to use with this as well. So that's it. Um, hope that was useful. Again, uh, if you run into problems, uh, try to figure them out as best you can. Um, struggle um, might be there. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. Uh, let me know. As always, if you have any questions, if you want to do this in Linux, that might be even better because obviously Cassandra is designed to run on servers, which mostly run Linux. There are Windows servers and this does work in Windows, but um, maybe a little bit easier in Linux. Hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.